Hey everybody, Trolley Pulley here, the troll you can trust, back with a Walking Dead Post 5 video. Featuring a new blue ranged Morgan to the game, with a new specialist skill as well, called Follow Up. Looking at the kit Morgan has, we're going to start everything off with the brand new specialist skill, as everything else ties into his specialist skill. So once per turn, when this specialist kills an enemy with an attack or adrenaline rush, they will receive a bonus action. Also, one more thing to point out as well. This Morgan will not, will not ever be bitten by a walker or a zombie. Doesn't matter what universe you're in because this Morgan is the embodiment of rule number two from Zombieland. Double tap. Which means they will get an extra turn. Morgan goes and kills somebody, guess what? His reign of terror is not over yet, and he will be able to slap somebody up with another attack. This can be extremely devastating, and just based on this specialist skill alone, I would assume that having a command with this Morgan can cause some serious destruction. With that in mind, let's move over to his Adrenaline Rush. A 76 AP, 750% big dick swing and damage to one enemy. This character does get hilarious amounts of attack, being at 150% attack, which I don't even think anything else in the game even goes that high. But my goodness, for a 6 star, that is incredible. This buff though only does last for one turn, so as soon as Morgan uses his adrenaline rush, the buff comes after the attack, because you're going from top to bottom in the sentence here. You'll deal 750% damage, then this character will get a 150% attack bonus for one turn. Which means, when it's his turn again, the attack bonus is gone. <laughs> so, ideally, you're going to want a command with this Morgan. Next up on the Adrenaline Rush is that this character and a teammate will get focus for four turns. Pretty much here on in the rest of the fight, Morgan will have focus. No taunts or confuses or human shields will be able to affect him. As for Morgan's active skill, we get a little bit of maim and AP gain. A little different, but still, the AP gain is something we are familiar with. The maim is something new. But we are going to deal 600 maim damage to one enemy while this character gets 35% AP. This can be initially done on turn 3, which is a good portion of where actives are starting to come in. So, nothing different here on the initial cooldown. One cool thing with Morgan's active is we can kill an enemy survivor with it in proc follow-up and Morgan's special weapon mod. Taking a look at Morgan's rifle, since he is a damage roll survivor, we are going to get the 30% attack on a base. 15 crit, which is nothing and probably will be one of the main stats that will be altered. And then the final special mod is when killing an enemy, a 50% chance to gain 100% AP. Wow. Wow. This weapon synergizes extremely well with the specialist skill. Because if we look at this carefully, when Morgan kills somebody, he will get a bonus attack. So, if Morgan kills somebody, and his weapon does proc, and he is able to then pump out an adrenaline rush right after, Morgan can easily kill two people. Now let's take it a step further. Morgan could use his adrenaline rush to kill somebody, have this proc to give him 100% AP, and then follow up will proc for the bonus action, meaning that Morgan will be able to pop two Adrenaline Rushes off in one turn. Also as well, what we can have here is Morgan can start off with an Adrenaline Rush, kill somebody, pop his specialist skill, follow up, to then use his Adrenaline Rush again. Then let's just say he is then commanded to then potentially use his Adrenaline Rush for a third time. That is pretty scary, especially if you can tactically put together a strategy in which that when this does happen the enemy will just crumble and fall apart and then you can take home the win but this survivor on a per turn basis has insane amounts of single target burst damage potential so taking a look at morgan compared to other survivors that are blue tough 
Morgan at 750% damage to one enemy with a, I swear it's a useless attack buff unless you run a command with him. Pretty much, you're going to be using Morgan twice in a turn. So you're going to be getting the Adrenaline Rush, 750% damage to one enemy with potentially another 750% damage to one enemy, but with a 150% attack for one turn. I'm going to call it right now. I don't think anybody is going to be able to output more damage than Morgan. The 750% damage versus Andrea's 800% damage, as we can already tell, Andrea, single target wise, will put out more damage. But if we were to use Andrea's Adrenaline Rush, command her, she will not be Adrenaline Rushing again. There is a chance that Morgan's weapon will proc with his specialist skill to then be commanded again to have 750% damage to one enemy, but with a 150% attack buff. Looking at these stats as well, it is almost just another big middle finger to a lot of the red defense teams out there. Especially you, Erica. There seems to be quite a few people out there to get you, girl. Sooner or later, your time will come to an end. But at the same time as well as I've been calling this in the past with other videos, damage before defense is usually, from what I see, Scopely's route in releasing survivors. Does this to me say a human shield, a red human shield is coming very soon? Absolutely. I would, I would put money on that as well. Do I also think a new red tanky specialist survivor will be coming out in the future as well? Or some red survivor with a special weapon mod that'll cater more to defense to counter some of these high damage output blues? Yes. I think that's also on the horizon as well. Because as you can see here, these top blue survivors put out a lot of damage. Taking a look at Morgan's weapon and how we would mod it. First things first, when killing an enemy, a 50% chance to gain 100% AP, I would keep that. Especially the way his Adrenaline Rush looks, and where you will pretty much guarantee a kill on a red enemy, or for that matter, any other enemy out there, so long as they're not extremely tanky and at full HP. So there is a very good chance, a 50-50 chance, to proc this weapon pretty often. So, now that leaves... Three crafts, 40% attack, and a huge bonus to AP when attacking. Because we want to make sure we can get his Adrenaline Rush going as soon as possible to make sure we can start applying focus to everybody and applying immense amount of pressure with his follow-up. The 40% attack is to make sure that we kill whoever we're Adrenaline Rushing to then proc the specialist skill to then keep applying more pressure. As for combat mods for this Morgan, I'm only going to be making an attack set with him, as he is bringing the big guns. His base defense is way too low for me to even consider putting him on a defensive team, especially with all the yellows that have been just recently released. His defensive stats are so low that anybody with remotely high damage output yellows should be able to take him out turn one. But we're going to go with an attack set for this Morgan, and the first combat mod will be an attack combat mod. As for the trait combat mods, I would recommend attack versus blue or attack versus green. With this Morgan having a, having the capability of using 150% attack buff and a 750% damage AR, he is going to smoke the living shit out of reds. So let's make sure we start moving his utility and usefulness to other colors as well which is why I would recommend attack vs. blues or attack vs. greens for those combat mods. Next combat mod, I would go with stun resist. Reason being is it's okay for him to be confused as he can still generate AP. Even if he attacks the enemy while confused, that's a win. If he kills him, potential full AP. Morgan is confused and ends up attacking somebody on his own team. Well, still gains AP if he kills him. <laughs> Hopefully he has an Adrenaline Rush to use right after that because <laughs> we better get something out of Mutiny. <laughs> the next two combat mods, I would either choose Graze if you want to take a little bit more of a defensive approach with your Morgan just so he doesn't get knocked out turn one or turn two. And if you want to go for a more offensive approach, I would go with AP down. Seeing as Morgan, for the most part, with his weapon, we're going to be wanting to finish people off. For those odd moments where we do not finish somebody off, 
we need to make sure we have a little bit of AP down so that we don't get punished with an adrenaline rush following our turn. As for the wild card, I would recommend Impair Resist. Seeing as how his weapon works and getting another attack after killing somebody, being able to not generate AP is a huge cripple to Morgan. Let's jump over to the team comp section. We're going to go over four attack teams, two of which are going to focus around range, one yellow-blue, and one green-blue attack team. Granted, there are a lot more out there, but for the sake of time of this video, I'm only going to cover four, which is more than normal because usually I'll do an offense and defense team comps, but since we're not doing any defense here, we're going to go with four attack teams. The first range attack team is Andrea Leader, Command Sadiq, with our Morgan, Neutralize Governor, and Decapitate Tyrese. Offensive power is not lackluster in this team with Andrea having a 40% attack and huge AP when attacking to our range survivors. Meaning Morgan is going to kick off his AR come turn 2 if he wants to be commanded and then his whole AP generation killing process will then begin. Neutralize Governor for some damage control as we do not bring a healer with us on this team. We are pure glass cannon so preventing any adrenaline rushes when we can is a must. If we happen to face a mainly heal-centric team that doesn't have a lot of offensive pressure, we're going to bring in Tyrese to then decapitate all these Erikas and all these support characters, making quick work of them as we don't really have anything to worry about since they don't have any offensive pressure. It might sort of seem like a bad matchup when you're trying to bring Morgan at the same time as Tyrese, because with Morgan, you're also going to want to last hit to proc his weapon, and at the same time, proccing follow up. Onward to the next team. This is the Premier Carl team. This will be mainly a blue and yellow team. Carl is going to be bringing in your sustain and revives in case something happens to go wrong. Sadiq for our command for early turn purposes, while having Morgan to drop that big dick damage to somebody and then follow it up again onto somebody else. Waylon, because he's also got a big wang dang too, so why not put all the big wang dangers together on one team so they can just slap their wang dangs together and then pull all the honey monies? And then last on the list is Disarm Michonne. So once we have strong survivors such as this that have severely low defenses, especially since our leadership skill is not going to be giving them defenses, we are going to want a way to remove certain special weapon mods so that we can just start paving the way for our team to start smashing some skulls. Onward to the third team. Spencer Leader, because we are going to need somebody with some defense down and some stuns for an adrenaline rush. At the same time, a recover stun will also be greatly beneficial from Spencer as well. Sadiq for our command, because commands are really good. <laughs> we want that early turn process to start putting pressure on our enemy before they can start hitting us with their adrenaline rushes. Morgan for the big dick damage. Next, we're going to bring in Lewis or Disarm Michonne, depending on your preference. Both are actually good offensive pressure ways to handle the situation, but depending on what you're going up against, each one has their own niche. And last on the list will be Sandy, as we are going to need a decapitate on this team. Pure glass cannon, and this is made since we are dealing with defensive downs, we're going to be dealing with some heavy tank and revive team comps. Tanks and supports. Last on the list is going to be a green-blue team with Madison Leader, mainly due to her leadership skill because we are going to want to put some attack on some blue and greens, giving us a little bit more leeway on damage output depending on the traits. Instead of Sadiq this time, we're putting him on the bench and we're pulling Glenn into the game. Get your helmet on there, buddy boy, because Negan is not smashing that shit in today. Following Glenn is Morgan for the same old, same old reasons with his big wang dang damage. And trust me, looking at Morgan. Dicks down to this mother after Morgan we're gonna be bringing in Bruce or Shiva if you have Bruce bring him in for the disarm to pave the way for your team if you do not happen to have Bruce we're gonna bring in Shiva so we can start using on turn two her stun active to basically give this same purpose as a disarm so we do not affect ourselves with weapon modifiers also at the same time as well both of their actives can be used for damage control against adrenaline rushes and last on the list we are going to either go with an Anna or a Conrad, a green or a blue, depending on either what you have or what you're going up against for the enemy. Anna does apply a lot of CC and burst damage if that is what you're looking for with her taunt to three on turn two. 
So if you need that early pressure CC, I would go with Anna. If you're looking for a lot more damage output, which you can get away with Conrad's big dick damage and not have to worry about his paper thin defenses, then go for Conrad. Especially if you know the team you're going to be versing has more reds than yellows. And that's going to wrap up the video on the new Morgan. What do you all think of this new Morgan? Do you like his kit? Do you think something was missing? Or do you think they loaded him up with too much stuff? Let me know in the comments down below. But thank you all for watching. If you enjoyed the video and made you laugh before you anything positive, please give a nice karate chop that like, subscribe button. Make sure you leave a comment down below. Support's greatly appreciated. And other than that, I'll catch you all in the next video. Bye-bye.